In early October, General Dynamics unveiled their new tank, the Abrams X, and to be honest, this tank does look great. In this video, we will take a look at this new tank and see if it is a good upgrade for the Abrams. First thing that needs to be addressed about this tank is the fact that this is just a tech demonstrator, not a fully developed tank ready for sale or any kind of service. This tank was made by General Dynamics in order to showcase some technological solutions to the army. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play game available for PC. World of Warships has introduced top-notch new graphics, more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather have just been updated with stunning new water effects and textures that make the game's seas virtually indistinguishable from the real deal. There are multiple ship classes to choose from. Conquer the oceans abroad battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers or cruisers, and if the depths call to you, dive in with the submarines. Oh, and did I mention that the game is also available on consoles? You can download the game by following the link in the description. If you register with the link, you will receive a huge starter pack. During the registration, use the code BRAVO to get 500 doublons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and one free of choice ship after you complete 15 battles. Once again, follow the link in the description and use the code BRAVO when you register. Thank you World of Warships for sponsoring this video. We will first start with the turret, with the fact that the turret is now remotely operated and the crew of three all sit in the forward hull compartment. Sounds familiar? There are many things that need to be said about this. Let's start from the turret itself. The turret has been lowered, this is just one of the steps that have been taken to reduce the weight of the tank, because, in case you didn't know, the weight of the Abrams has been increasing a lot with each upgrade. So much that the new SEPV-3 with a trophy active protection system would weigh around 70 metric tons, which is not good even in the slightest. By lowering the turret, the armor area would get smaller, therefore the weight of the tank would drastically decrease, and in order to retain the good gun depression, the center part of the turret remained the same height as on the old turret. The crew now all sit in what used to be driver's compartment, which is achieved by removing the frontal fuel tanks and placing the seats inside of them. And there are three hatches on the hull now. It is also said that the crew can easily access the turret compartment from the inside and fix any problems that might occur. Now, I do see a couple of problems with this. First problem has to do with the turret itself. If they decide to go full remote, why did they retain the same weight of the turret? They could have also reduced some weight by reducing the overall size of the turret. The armor thickness could have remained the same, but the weight would still be reduced. The upper front plate is also unchanged from the original 38mm thick plate, which is a big problem. Disregarding the modern APF SDS, any thread that comes from the upper angle can easily penetrate it. Yeah, the tank does have an active protection system, but threats like RPG-30 are still a thing and are actually being used. It is also problematic against artillery, a hit by an artillery shell in the upper front plate would kill all three crew members, and we have seen what artillery does to tanks in Ukraine. But as I already said, this is just a technology demonstrator, if they would ever fully develop this tank, I'm sure this kind of issue would be addressed, since this is meant to just demonstrate the technology, adding extra armor on the upper front plate isn't really a technological advancement in any way. In my personal opinion, I believe it would have been better to keep the driver in the hull, but to have both gunner and commander in the turret, since it has been lowered, the commander could be moved to the left side where the loader used to be. This works on tanks like K2 Black Panther, which also have a pretty similar turret design. When it also comes to the protection, the hull sides also appear to be unchanged. But then again, they can simply just install any add-ons they see fit for this tank. Not to mention that the weight reduction is one of the big things for Abrams X, so this makes sense. And on top of the Trophy Active Protection System, the tank has also received laser warning receivers, as well as ATGM detection system. The fire control system of the tank seems to be pretty good. It appears both Gunner and Commander have Safran Paseo optical system with third generation thermal imagers and automatic target tracking. This system has a full 360 degree view and both Gunner and Commander can pretty much use it as either CITV or the main gun sight. 
Yeah, it rotates, but it can be locked on the front position and used as a main gun sight. This is good because the gunner can now observe the battlefield without rotating the turret. In many doctrines, gunner and commander split the observation arcs, where the gunner would have to constantly rotate the turret because of the fixed main gun sight. But now, he can keep the turret facing forward and observe easily by just rotating the sight, and then, with the push of a button, bring the sight in line with the main gun sight, or vice versa. The tank now also has a remotely operated 30mm M230LF autocannon, replacing the M2 Browning machine gun. To my knowledge, this autocannon does have the ability to fire airburst projectiles, and as such, is excellent to deal with drones. This is important since the drones appear to be a very common threat on the modern battlefield. And of course, in all aspects, an autocannon is better than a 50 cal machine gun, being also able to deal with most of the low armored vehicles. The main gun is the XM360, lightweight, low recoil, 120mm gun. This gun was developed for the future combat system and was designed for remotely operated turrets. This gun was probably chosen because of its lighter weight when compared to the M256, which saves around 1 ton of weight. Keep in mind though that this gun would not really have an impact on the performance of the actual projectiles. From the sources I could find, the gun is said to have the same ballistic performance as the M256. And of course, since the crew has now been moved to the hull, the main gun is now loaded with a rear bustle autoloader. The tank can also fire switchblade loitering munitions, which can be useful. You remember how I said that they completely removed the fuel tanks from the front hull? Well, that is because this Abrams has a new hybrid power pack, which reduces the fuel consumption by 50% when compared to the already existing gas turbine. Therefore, those fuel tanks are no longer needed. Not much is known about the power pack, except that it implements ACE or Advanced Combat Engine, which is an opposed piston diesel engine. Not much is known about the engine other than that, sadly. There were apparently three variants developed, with three, four and six cylinders. And if that is the case, then I assume the six-cylinder one is in the Abrams X, since it is stated to produce 1500 horsepower. Overall, the tank does have some good advancements but the tank will definitely not be adopted in its current form. As Timothy Rees from General Dynamics said, the army will probably like some things and not like some other things. They are supposed to provide feedback to General Dynamics so the tank can be moved to the next stage of development. Therefore, I don't expect we will see this tank being adopted in its current form, nor do I expect the tank to be fully developed anytime soon. That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.